This week on Dialogue, a personal account of post-Saddam Iraq. Welcome to the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C. I'm John Molesky. Each week, Dialogue explores the world of ideas and issues in international affairs, history, and culture. Our guest this week is Omar al-Mashadani. Omar is a public policy scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center. He has extensive experience in media both in Iraq and internationally and is in the process of establishing a non-governmental organization in Iraq that will focus on community development and democracy education. While in the United States, he's been part of the Leaders for Democracy Fellows program at Syracuse University. Omar, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, let, let's start with some of the personal biographical data. Where, where were you born? Where did you grow up in Iraq? Well, it's not I was born in Baghdad. and. Uh, I grown up in the Baghdad. I've never left uh, Iraq actually in uh, till after war, the last war, till 2004, for a while. And, and where uh, did you visit when you left initially? First, first visit was to Saudi Arabia, and uh, then during the past ten years, I've visited a lot of countries thanks to my job. Actually, I've been in Tokyo. I've been in Cuba. I've been in uh, the neighbor's country in Iran, in Syria, in Jordan, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Korea, uh, France, and Egypt. That's, that's mostly. Uh, but all that since 2004 till now. Before that, uh, it was so hard to get out of the country during the past regime. It's a lot of restrictions. And uh, I was a student. I uh, was uh, studying uh, chemical engineering. Uh, my subspecialty is uh, oil and gas treatment until 2003. And then I've been uh, involved in media section. How did that happen? How did you go from chemical engineering <laughs> to media? Well, it's like coincidence, actually. It's, uh, after 2003, it's too hard to get a job, actually. It's uh, sometimes you just need to, to, to do something, sure. especially after war. So one of my cousins uh, work in the broadcast station, radio station, and he called me, y you can deal with computer, you have great uh, Arabic language, so you can help us with that. I started with them as a temporary, but uh, day by day I like it actually. This, this field, I, I like to be in, in, in the media section. So I had the opportunity after one year or little more to, to work in, in my field in chemical engineering, especially in, uh, in refinery. And that's dream for, for anyone sure. from my branch. But I make that decision. I don't want that. I, I like the media. I like this uh, part. I've been uh, correspondent and then newsroom manager, editor, and interviewer, just like you, mm -hmm. and uh, et cetera, in, in this field. And that's opened me another doors in the satellite channels. Work as a reporter for satellite channels, uh, Arabic satellite channels. and. That's it, day by day. And that's opened me another door, actually, uh, in, in the governmental. Well, provide some insight for us, uh, you know, and you could talk about e either the personal or the professional, or the big picture or the small picture. What are the changes that you observe for the pre-Saddam, or, or a pre-invasion, I should say, and post-Saddam era? Well, how has life changed for your family, your friends, for you? Well, everything's changed, and somehow. In, uh, being better or being worse, but uh, th there is some changes happening in 2003 in, in the invasion. If we back to that, uh, it's hard to compare. It's not uh, that's the that's the most question I've been asked, and I, I really don't uh, like to answer it. Which, which is better now or under Saddam's regimes? Well, so you're conflicted about which is better? Definitely, because if you're talking about some specific issue, mm -hmm. okay, let's talk about security. Individual security, personal security, well, definitely it was better before. In a police state? In the police? Sure. You can say it's a, pol a police state, yes, but I've never been threatened just like today. I, I have to watch my car every single day. I couldn't get my car without recheck if I, if I face if someone put me a bomb or something. I've been threatened. I wo uh, walk with a, with a gun sometimes because the situation is now very much different. At least there was an order. But uh, in the other hand, there was no 
no, no freedom, no uh, participation in the politics. You, you shouldn't talk about politics, actually. Just take care of yourself and that's it, your, your own business. That's, that's different. That's, that's uh, really changed after 2003. We had uh, what they called polarism, uh, uh, different political parties who, yes. who, who participate in the, mm -hmm. in the cabinet. You have the right to, to, uh, to get another ideology, not the path ide uh, party ideology. And that's something new. Were you part of the Ba'ath Party before the? No, actually. Okay. okay. And uh, that's caused me a lot of problem because if you want to get your what, what you prefer, some of the college uh, it was being conditioned to be a Ba'ath Party member and with some rank to get in this uh, this college. I didn't want. I didn't make that choice, so I go to the Kim College. Union. So. Uh, Obviously, for an individual mixed bag, as you suggest, some things better, some things worse. Uh, but what, what about the notion of stability? Often, when you, we look at countries from the outside looking in, from a U.S. perspective or another country's perspective, the question is: Is Iraq a stable country right now? What, what is your sense of when it comes to uh, everyday life or to governance? How stable is Iraq? Stable? I don't think that's a good, uh, right word. Doesn't but, apply. Uh, no, it's not stable not right now, actually. Uh, May, I, I'm optimistic, but uh, if you ask me now, is it stable? No, definitely it's not. Actually, we are still uh, uh, sitting on, on hot seats, on, on, on fire, actually. And you feel that everything could happen during 24 hours. Everything, totally everything could happen. Because uh, just like uh, what's happening in Egypt and, and uh, Tunisia, no one was, was expecting to, to, to face something like this. In Iraq, we had demonstrations. In Iraq, we feel we had the militias working and uh, making shows and, and parade, etc. And uh, uh, you feel that even the, the cabinet is not stable enough. What we call it a national uh, national cabinet or national unity cabinet. So everyone who's in the, uh, in the parliament are participating in the cabinet, mm -hmm. and that make us uh, make the cabinet totally un unstable because you know the uh, the opposite and the and the, the the government in the same in the same uh, in the same room. So till now, after about 15 months since the election, we didn't have uh, a minister for defense, minister for interior, minister for national security. So that, that's definitely... I'm wondering, how do you cope with that as a, as a human being on an everyday basis? You know, just in some degree, living in a country like this, you're spoiled by stability. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't have our problems and our differences and outbreaks of violence, things that happen in every country, but a much more stable environment. So I, I don't think anyone who lives in a country like the U.S. or Canada, say, can really understand what it's like to live with such uncertainty on a daily basis. And what I'm wondering, does, just, does this just become a way of life and humans are incredibly adaptable? Mm -hmm. or, or do you live with a constant sense of stress and, and anxiety over what might happen? Well, there is some stress, but uh, definitely a lot of us have to deal with it. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's not a good uh, security situation, but you have to do, go to work. You have to do something. Some of, uh, some of us are just move his work to his home or move his work to another city. We you know, got uh, after the sectarian violence uh, during 2006 and 7 till 8. It was the worst years, actually, since 2003 till now. And uh, a lot of Iraqi people just move their works to the cities that they, they feel they belong. Or there's change, where change. there's more safety or security or just where there's work available? It's not more safety. It's a, you feel that you are a majority. Now what's uh -huh. happening, it's... Uh, it's being majority and minority, and even in neighborhoods, even in areas, small areas. Okay, you are a Sunni. Uh, you will. We wouldn't feel more comfortable if you feel uh, if you live in in a Shia majority's neighborhood. Uh, you didn't. Okay, you are good and you have a great relations with your neighbors, but uh, you don't know what uh, what anything happened. And uh, some of the uh, Al Mahdi's army tried to revenge from anyone he's Sunnis, and right. versa versa from the other side. So that uh, makes the unstability. But uh, just like you mentioned, that uh, the people is so adaptable to to deal with it in somehow. Now, the, the bigger question about democracy. First of all, I guess I should ask: Do you feel there's any consensus in Iraq with what democracy means moving forward? Well, that's negotiable, actually. We did. <laughs> yeah. One one of my. Uh, goals to came to the United States is to under, understand what is the democracy because what we got, what they call it in my country is democracy is very much spoiled actually. 
and uh, I, I'm not sure is, is that real democracy. If you mention democracy, it's just elections in this ballot back boxes which magically appears every every, every, every four years, years yeah. and that's it. Well, I, 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 I don't agree with that. Okay, so I, we don't want the democracy if they, if just like that. What we happen, it's uh, d democracy is supposed to be participating from the whole people. Democracy, as I, as I understand, that you need uh, the, the cabinet, the prime minister feel that he is an employee to the people, not a, a, a super god. Right, servant. That, that, that servants, I, I say the employee. Servants. But he, to be, he, he must feel that he is a public servant. And well, that's a huge shift from where it was. And, and <laughs> well, definitely obviously. it is. Well, you know, on in the, in the other hand, yes, I don't expect it's, uh, democracy is not a button to press on it. Everything's going to change. It's going to take time, uh, time. But uh, it's take time if you're walking on the right way. Well, till now, we didn't walk in the right way. If I, uh, I want to describe our regime, it's going to say hybrid. It's still hybrid. We didn't got, we, we still not even semi-democratic regime. We got election. Okay, yes, we got election. We got multi-political parties, but uh, we have an elected monarchy, mm -hmm. uh, if I may use this, this word. Uh, and, and you, you uh, your job as a government spokesperson, uh, doing uh, uh, a spokesperson for, for a parliament. Parliament for a while. Yeah, so you, you got to work with people who are members of the government directly. Mm -hmm. uh, what well, about, about among them? What, what do they think uh, individually or as a group? What can you say either specifically or generally about their designs on the quest for democracy, the evolution of democracy in Iraq, or even, I guess we should say, the definition of democracy in Iraq? Well, it's different from, I, I, I've talked with a lot of them actually about that, but it's different. Some of them, I, you feel that he's really want to do something, but the majority uh, maybe didn't understand what is democracy. You need someone to live outside the Arab worlds and try to participate in the real democracy. I've seen that some of uh, the, the politicians who lived or uh, spent some couple of years in, uh, in Europe or in the United States or in, in Tokyo, etc., came with the open-minded, much, much more open-minded. And that's uh, something I, I will uh, deal, uh, argue with that. It's, uh, came, he, he already know what is the picture, the right picture of democracy and starting to do so. But the, the most of, uh, the majority of, uh, of the, our politicians is, uh, lived all, either in Iran or in Syria. And that doesn't give you a good experience, actually. And came with the background of maybe a religious background or stu his study was um, in culture, or religious. He didn't study uh, this public policy studies, or, uh, make this reading or knowledge in, in uh, that field. So I wouldn't expect something more than what he he came with, with, that's his stereotype of democracy. He read about it, okay, democracy it means there is election. We got election, okay, so we got election. If, if you mean more, what kind of more? Free, free to speech? Okay, we got free to speech, but maybe we, got, we didn't got free after the speech. You could be arrested. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't say that's a, a, a democracy. Actually, one of the things I really surprised in, uh, in February, after starting the demonstrations, at, uh, at 28th or maybe at the beginning of March, uh, the Prime Minister was in, uh, making a statement and said, we are the most liberal uh, uh, country with liberties with dealing with dem demonstrations. You wouldn't say that in Europe. You wouldn't say that in, uh, see that in, in the United States. Are you talking serious? Yes. And he, he keep repeating it. If you, if you see how, how the Americans deal he, with the... Did he believe what he was saying, or was it just pure propaganda? Well, uh, uh, unfortunately, he was. He, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I, I was shocked when I hear it. Mm -hmm. And raise up the, the TV, and he uh, just say it again and again, three times. Okay, are, are you kidding? Did you, did you ever see another democratic country how to deal with demonstrations? Well, that raises the question. Where, where are these standards for what it means in practice? Where, do, where are they achieved? Where are they defined? Is it... Uh, a long process of education from the ground up where Iraqis come to grips with building the kind of country they want? Is it something that can be imported from other constitutions around the, on, around the globe? How are these standards for democracy defined? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Because there's no some super, there's no Camelot 
for King Arthur. <laughs> right. There, there, there's no some super uh, regime just to gave it to, to you free size. Anyone could could wear it. Yeah. That's that's impossible. So we, everyone should learn from his own experience. And what we got in uh, in Iraq after ducats from one uh, one regime, uh, one part, one party who control the whole uh, country. You didn't. Uh, the people didn't got that knowledge about what is the other choice. Okay, maybe this is the only way we we, we could live. And uh, he was saying that we are democratic. Okay, so we are democratic. I didn't see another good model to to compare. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, let's, let's be honest with you. When, when I first goes to uh, to Tokyo, it was a, a remark in my my life. It's different system. Okay, I. You need to see something good. To, come, to, to, to try to work on it, on, on yourself to get that. What are the things you've seen, either whether it be in Tokyo or in the United States or anywhere you've traveled, what are the things you've seen uh, uh, maybe about the infrastructure of democracy or the attitudes related to a democracy that you'd like to take home, that you think would be the missing components in Iraq? The rule of people, the rule of parts. Actually, that's just the rule of people. The people are awareness enough to, uh, to feel that they had the power Iraqi citizens didn't got that feeling. We had the power to change. Uh, what I've seen here in the United States, for example, okay, who who is the administration? Oh, we had the power. We can change it. We will do what we want to do, mm -hmm. and that's that's some feel. And uh, something else, there's in back home, there's no democratic institutions. It's not you need some institutions to to, to build your your democracy. Okay, I votes for, for you and you are now the, my president or my representative or, or whatever. But that doesn't mean your cho choice is going to be mine because some, sometimes I, I, I want to take this, not that. And that's what's happening. I'm uh, seeking now to build a think tanks. We didn't got that. Actually, there's no second opinion. You will take the cabinet's opinion, the government opinion, and that's it. Mm -hmm. There's no something negotiable. So if, if public participate, professionals, semi-professionals, academic, participate in anything, in public policy. I'm not talking here about the foreign policy, but let, let's talk about public policy. Let's talk about education, health system. You need some uh, Iraqi activists, citizens, uh, professionals, academics to, to, to give their uh, opinion about that. Are they that. beginning to emerge? Or is there a shortage? There's a lot of shortage. There's a lot of shortage. Tell, and, tell, and that's tell, part, no. part of what a void you helped to fill. That's <laughs> at least partially. I, I, I hope so. It's a big, ambitious. Uh, yeah, I don't want to put too much pressure on you. It's more than one man, obviously. But the uh, this you've heard a notion here, I'm sure, that has been contested. That some Americans and some Westerners have said things like, "Well, Arabs don't have a tradition for democracy," or "Or Muslims perhaps don't have a tradition for democracy," uh, and you know it's been largely contested as being a, a biased or prejudiced worldview. And then clearly with the emergence of the so-called Arab Spring, there have been activity within these countries that might suggest otherwise. What is your view on this notion? Well, I totally disagree with that because I have in, in, in examples and experiments. Okay, Turkey is an, a Muslim country. And uh, Malaysia is a Muslim country. Indonesia is Muslim countries. A lot of Muslim countries around the world. Uh, Niger is a lot, uh, has a great democracy in, in way or another. And even in Arab countries, even if you back to the Islamic history, you got a lot of things of the, uh, of participating uh, people participating or democracy or free to to speech, free to free to write. Even if you back to the history, I'm talking about after the prophets and in the Khalifa after the uh, after the prophets passed away. So it's not a matter of culture, because uh, but you can say it's a matter of circumstances. It's a matter of uh, opportunity. It's a matter, a matter of uh, after colonial regimes uh, during the uh, early of the 20th century, I could say maybe I agree with that. And even in Arab countries, it's, uh, what's, what's happening in, uh, in Tunisia and in Egypt and what is happening now in, in Libya, in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, I don't know why, why, why is everyone trying to neglect the demonstrations in Iraq, just like, okay, he's already democratic, so we, we should not talk about that. And in other countries, in Bahrain, it's, it's mean that there's awareness for democratic. There is no system, or there's no one can say, okay, your kind of race or people, you wouldn't be 
uh, able to deal with democracy. I don't think so. Is this the beginning of a momentum that can't be stopped, what's been happening? I feel so. I feel what, what's happening in Tunisia was just a spark. He, it's really changed something. Uh, it sent a message, okay, we can, we can do something. I was shocked when I heard that Bin Ali lived uh, the country. Oh, really? He, he's, and that's quick, after 18 d days? Mm -hmm. That means there's, okay, we can do the same. And that's what's happening in Egypt. And that's what's happening in Libya. Well, definitely in Libya and in Syria, it's a difficult, uh, question, uh, difficult situation, but you can do something. You know, a brief essay that you wrote that uh, you shared with me, uh, you said that democracy is about trust. Let's talk about that. I mean, these questions I know aren't easy. How do you build these things? But how far along is Iraq to having some sense of public trust where people trust politicians or trust institutions or trust each other when you talk about Shia, Sunni, former Ba'ath Party members? What is the, if you were sort of measuring the level of trust right now in civil life or civic life in uh, Iraq? Well, I don't know how to measure that, but it's a matter of... Uh being uh, experiments. Okay, I don't trust you, but day by day, I've seen something from John Molesky. Okay, he, I can trust him. So you, you, you may, you should give a lot of things to to build that trust, building tr a bridge. You're describing a process. Yourself. You just have this to is a process from both sides, and try. from every side. Mm -hmm. That's lack of trust, causing a lot of. Uh, uh, unstability in the relation. Okay, I don't trust anything, even what's happening now in, in, the, in the cabinet. Uh, just yesterday, I've heard one of the MPs uh, in, the, in the parliament from Iraqia, major blog, the number one blog, said, okay, 90% of the agreements with the other blog, it didn't uh, implement. 90%. Okay, well, so that means there's a lack of, big lack of trust. I don't trust the other blog gonna do uh, the same. And he talked about uh, detainees, he talked about uh, uh, dignity, he talked about uh, uh, amnesty, he talked about uh, uh, debatification, uh, balance in, in, the, uh, in jobs between the sex, etc., etc. So you feel that lack of trust is still exists and, and huge, and uh, especially between the politicians and political parties, maybe not between the people, uh, regular people. Y y there is a, la a big trust between them, even if you talk about Shia and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. It's happened for a short time, and you, everyone feels that it's not came from, from, the, uh, from the people. Okay, I'm a Sunni or a Shia, we are neighbor for a ducats. Why just now start the problem between us? You feel that some foreign factor gets in, in, involved in this. And that's what everyone dis discovered, mm -hmm. but after a lot of casualties. Tell us about your, your work here in the U.S. and your uh, affiliation with Syracuse and now the Wilson Center. How did you end up with this opportunity, and, and what do you hope to achieve while you're here? Actually, I uh, submitted an uh, applicant for uh, State Department for the uh, part of MIPI program, Middle East uh, Partnership Initiative and in the LDF program, uh, Leaders for Democracy. It took one or two uh, from uh, the whole MENA regions, Middle East and North Africa, and uh, five weeks spent in Syracuse, in Maxwell Institute, in Syracuse University, Maxwell Institute for uh, Citizenship, uh, for academic studies in public policy and in democracy. And then we spent the other six weeks in uh, one of the NGOs in, uh, in DC. And I was lucky to get uh, Woodrow Wilson. And being in Woodrow Wilson, actually, it's a perfect environment to, to, the, to a think tank. And that's why I'm working on it. I'm working on, on my democracy or in, in Iraq, and is it real? And you have, a, you have a, a name, the uh, uh, Al Noor, is that it? Enlightening Al Noor Center oh, uh, for Community Development? Is actually, that what you... this essay was uh, uh, edited in October. Mm -hmm. So before everything happened during the past uh, seven months, eight months. And it was more, it's not essay, it's more than answering some of the question. Okay, what's your plan to do? And that's what, one of the, my plans at this time, to build a, an NGO, try to aware people, uh, youth especially, about what they're right. Okay, democracy is more than what you think. It's just uh, ballot boxes or just voting. And that's what my goal. But uh, when I came here, maybe I've seen a lot of in the United States environment that think tanks do a lot of job. 
uh, think tanks came with the, deal with the experts, but uh, send their message to the public. And the public needs the expert need the second opinion, and that's why I'm working on it. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's perfect. Okay, I've seen something different because here, if you got more money, you got more think tanks, you got more media, you got so more influence, and that's in, in my country too. So there is nothing uh, perfect. There's nothing ideal, but at least. Every, every, every work in, uh, in the awareness, it's a good. And what's your best hope moving forward, looking ahead? We, even though you've made clear that you believe democracy is more than voting, you do have elections to look forward to in 2016. What's your best hope for the impact that you can have leading up to the elections? Well, I don't know. Maybe I, I changed my mind. I didn't participate in the election. But uh, I'm, well, well, my best hope for, for Iraqi to, uh, to have the chance to hear from other sides. Uh, we are not that reading people, uh, reading uh, knowledge, and they, they should learn to. And uh, any work in education, any uh, effort being uh, spent on education and awareness and uh, training in any field, that's going to be helpful and that's going to be uh, going to make a, a huge impact on the, on the future of Iraq. Well, Omar, uh, your work is clearly important work and it's really the work of uh, any of us who support the idea of democracy. So uh, best of luck. Thanks for sharing your time with us today. Thank you so much, John. Nice to meet you. Uh, we'll return next week with another edition of Dialogue. Until then, for all of us at the Wilson Center, I'm John Molesky. Thanks for joining us. We'd like to hear from you. Please send your questions or comments to dialogue at wilsoncenter.org. You can also follow us on Facebook. Search Dialogue Radio and Television. Our host Twitter feed is twitter.com slash John Malevsky. Dialogue is a co-production of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars and MHZ Networks. Dialogue is available via broadcast, cable, satellite, and telco on MHZ Worldview throughout the United States. To see how to watch where you live, visit www.mhznetworks.org. Next week on Dialogue. At the same time, advertisers are being TiVoed out by viewers. Advertisers want to get not into the what they call the interstitial between shows. They want to be right in the middle of the show. Like if you watch Biggest Loser or American Idol, you'll see a lot of product placement. So unfortunately, the same thing is happening in news programs. They want to be in the center of the news, these products. So you put those two things together. The advertisers want into the programs, as they always have, and now coming together with the news teams not having as much of their own content, not as many reporters, and that's sort of opened the floodgates to this fake, fake news.